Welcome, welcome, you pedal people. You want to know, you need to know about the CXM 1978. I always have to write, is it CXM or CMX? No, it's a CXM 1978 from Chase Bliss. You're going to ask me, dude, that's ridiculous. Yeah, flying faders and all that, but we're not going to buy a rework for almost a thousand bucks because here in Germany, this puppy clocks in at 978 euro or something like that. How does it make sense? Well, it does and it doesn't. It doesn't in the way that nowadays you get reverb pedals when we're talking about Le Pedal that are quite cheaper. You can buy a TC reverb, no flying faders, but okay. You can buy a Strymon. You can buy even a Chase Bliss, Darkwood, great pedal, much cheaper. You can buy um, a Source Audio Ventress, great box, many more algorithms. And that's all fine. And you can buy an R1 from Walrus Audio. Great reverb. You know, half the price. Less than half the price. But, A, none of them have flying faders, and that's cool. Uh, and But B, it's not the same target idea. These are pedal reverbs for your pedal board, as is the CXM 1990. But look at what we, in my age, used to spend on reverbs. A thousand bucks was a cheap one. I remember the lexicons, and that's the level that we're talking about here. We're talking about super high-end shit. The lexicon uh, PCM70 rack unit, 2,500 marks back then, which would have been 2,500 euro nowadays. Um, and nowadays, you're looking at the IR loading uh, impulse response, Bricasti or something like this. 3,000, 4,000 bucks. Obviously, any uh, Eventide, ridiculously expensive. Can you get similar sounds out of other boxes, like an Eventide H9, for example? Yes, you can. Will they have flying faders? No. But what we're talking about here is the highest quality reverb you can get on the level of any studio reverb, which is why the track in the beginning also had it on the vocals. And also cool and simple and no menus and flying faders and some kind of aura of specialness. And you know what? You pay for that. But what the CXM1978 is, as far as I understand, it is going back to the era of early digital reverbs. And one of the early digital reverbs was the Lexicon 224. Later, it became the Lexicon 480L, L4 Lark, which was the remote with faders on it, which, was, which you see in uh, pictures of uh, studios from all around the world. And then way later on, it became, became the 980. The 9? I think the 980. The 9-something. Any of these, at the time when they came out, was way well over ten thousand dollars euro i think the 480l with 15 grand was a rack unit and then you had the remote in front of you with faders i don't think it had flying faders now what the cxm 1978 is trying to go for are some of the reverb sounds from a 224 i think kind of like that so let's see put it on the screen right next to me and we're going to look at what it actually is obviously it is much simpler than what the lexicon would be. But it's going for those types of sounds. And it's a very unique kind of way to operate it. Not just talking about the flying faders, which is a nice gimmick. You can, it's, it's not just a gimmick because he immediate, that's why the lock what, the, or the remote for the lexicon had that. Because it's an immediate visual feedback of what's going on. Very easy to edit, very easy to see what's happening, especially when you have presets. Because with knobs, non-motorized knobs, yeah, you might change the preset, but you have no idea where they are at. And here, when I change the preset, I know exactly how it's set based on the colors and the fader position. So yeah, that's a good thing. And obviously that means recallability of presets, in this case, 30 of them. There's a bank of nine, or actually 10, including zero, then you hold this in, there's a red bank, there's a green bank, and there's a Burbank. <laughs> California. So, um, 30 presets, bypass on off, and everything can be controlled with an expression pedal. 
actually, I think the built-in expression functions are more flexible than what you would get with MIDI. So I'm not going to really show MIDI. I've done that on the uh, preamp mark two, three Benson preamp thing, <coughs> automaton thing. And it's great what you can do with MIDI. However, doing MIDI expression, I think, is more limiting than using expression directly on this because expression functions are great. And showing how it can switch presets with MIDI, uh, program changes, done, easy. So let's look quickly in the back. We have a camera that shows it from the side there. Stereo input, stereo output, which is what we're doing. Full-size MIDI in and out. And then there's an aux, which is actually the Meris. Uh, favorite switch kind of where you can, you know, have a couple of different things you can control if you have the Maris switch, which I don't. And then there's expression at the bottom and then power. It needs 500 milliamps to operate the faders. It operates with less, but then the faders don't work. Let's look at the knobs first. Why not? <coughs> or the buttons, actually. So jump. Um, jump is... Kind of a weird function for me, and I don't get why that's justified to be on there, but maybe just because I don't use it that way. So jump will be... Why did it go to 1? Why did it go to 0? Why did it go to 5? Jump will go either to 0 or 5. That way, if you arrive at a certain preset, you can have uh, a flipping back and forth. Okay, so it makes sense for that. Let's do this for example. So I'm on, uh, let's say I'm on, I'm on seven. So I want to go between seven and another preset. So what I, what I do is on seven, I do jump red, which will go to five and I save that. And now, no, that doesn't make sense. So if I now hit my preset button, it will go to five. Six, seven. Well, that way I can actually cycle between three different presets. Five, six, seven. Okay, but let's save that. Saving by hitting the bypass button. So let's say I want to do a flipping back and forth. Well, I do zero. I say jump to five. I save that. Now it jumps to five. And there I do blue, which will jump to zero. And that way I can go back and forth between those two presets if I needed that. However, unless I reprogram that, I have no way to actually go to a different preset. So realistically, use MIDI if you want to do complicated things, but you can get that happening with the pedal if you needed to jump between two different presets. Um, we're going to turn that off. And that's how easily that's done. Okay, you have three different algorithms. That's it. And they're not even fancy ones. There isn't even a shimmer and all that stuff. There's room, plate, and hall, and that's it. And I love these buttons. I mean, everything on this is fucking high quality. It's it's just, it's fun. So, uh, diffusion uh, diffuses. Low is smearing on the attack. So, just smears the attack a bit. In hall mode, the low setting enables a sparse mode that surrounds the attack with a cloud of soft delay taps. Ah, okay, that's what we want. Uh, okay, that's that's really cool because you can actually have a, a reverby kind of a delay thing happening. Medium is a softened attack, best heard on percussive sound with a short decay, spreading the energy of the attack. And high diffusion introduces regeneration to the pre-delay, along with an extensive, extremely softened attack. So the, all of them are soft attacks. And then on hall, probably best with, uh, no, high diffusion and the lo-fi clock. There's a couple of settings that get you specific kind of really cool features. Then we have uh, modulation, which I think is off. As you ask me, that's the most usable. E even on medium, it goes into pretty drastic detune, and on high, it's drastic. And that's the clock. So uh, it doesn't tell you, tell you what time it is. Huh? On standard, that's how it would have been in 1978. On hi-fi, we're talking 48K, 32-bit, 42 milliseconds maximum pre-delay. On standard, we're in 24K sample rate. So that's old school. Okay. 
uh, 16-bit resolution and 168 milliseconds maximum pre-delay. And on lo-fi, it actually varies between 48K and 2.4K and 16-bit resolution with a maximum of 1.7 seconds pre-delay. So it, 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 on lo-fi, it, this will vary the sample rate and then do things. Okay, moving on. Where's my reverb time? Where's my decay time? And that's where this is very special. And maybe that's why you got to spend the money because it's very special in that sense. You don't have a decay time. You have a decay time here. So you have how much bass and how much mid frequencies are you feeding into the reverb? And that determines the decay time. So both of them up is full decay time on all the frequencies. Well, treble is here. But um But um but, um, nice. this wasn't the the how these are set will determine the sound slash length of the reverb. It's a little bit difficult to wrap your head around, but it's a Chase Bliss pedal. So unless you've read this seven times on the crapper, which I have, don't expect to understand it. That's the Chase Bliss world. You gotta work your way into it. It's it, it's not an instant gratification pedal. It's a work for it pedal. So, but then you also have this cross. Now, so let's let's put it this way. If I put this all the way up, then these frequencies are below it are prioritized, meaning you will have a lot of bass frequencies and not so many mid frequencies. Right here, it's equal. It says right around here, 360 hertz crossover. So uh, you have less of these and you get it. It's a crossover frequency thing. Up here, not so many mids because you only have the very high mids. Here you have loads of high mids and then low. And here you have um, just a tiny little bit of low and mostly highs M or mids. Mm -hmm. So even... When this is all the way up. But if treble is down, you still have a shorter reverb. And now it's confusing the living crap out of me. So you have to play with these three for reverb time. And mix is mix. Now we get into, let's figure it out. Now I have an interesting setup here. I want this to be stereo because it's a very clearly stereo reverb. And I get really, really good clean sounds out of the Houston Kettner Amp Man, which I'm also reviewing today, actually. So... I thought, let's do this. They have uh, insert, insert, they have um, effects loops. So what I'm doing is I'm going into the Houston Kettner Amp Man right here on the vintage channel. So it's super clean and I have the effect loop on. And that is sending mono to the reverb and then stereo back into the effects loop and also into the effects return of the Amp Man Modern, which has that metal channel, but I'm just using the power amp of that and going out DI on both of them because it has a great DI out. So that's my clean sound. this Quenzel M3, which just received new GraphTech locking tuners, a new GraphTech Razor Max bridge, and beautiful uh, Klopmann hammer and anvil pickups. So this is an insane guitar, especially in uh, call tap. So let's look at what we have. Everything is off, so we're in room. And I'm gonna put this crosstalk in the middle. Let's put treble in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's a very, very small, tiny room. And it's uh, rather dull because I got the treble down. And you would say, uh, dude, that's a sound I can get out of loads of other reverbs. Well, yeah, but the quality of a reverb instantly stands out. And even on a simple room like that, you feel as if it's as if it's fun. No, you fun has to be is to be had is. <laughs> That relatively dry Houston Kettner DI sound is really coming to life. Yeah, that's technically still a hall, uh, a room, but of course, a room with kind of infinite decay. So let's bring this back a bit. And let's see by adding the treble if I can make it bigger. Yeah, that top end just comes in totally differently. It's all about the frequencies that you pump into the reverb. Now, let's see here, uh, crossover. Right now we have loads of mids, but not so many basses. <laughs> Might not make such a big difference when both of them are actually at the same level. Let's do that. Loads of mids. Okay, so I'm not sending that much of the bass in it, but the bass has a lot of frequencies assigned to that bass knob. Do you know what I'm saying? So now it's a shorter reverb, but loads of that mids, which isn't that many frequencies anymore because I kind of cut that off, but loads of the mids are going in there and of course more of the treble. So it's a completely different sound. Very clean down there, but like up there.
these different sounds, and there were quite a few right now, have been achieved by just pumping different combinations of frequencies more or less into the reverb, which has been a room without any other parameters being altered. So you can see the ridiculous flexibility of this concept. However, you will need to wrap your head around that concept. And I can't help you any more than I've just have because I haven't wrapped my head around it fully. Let's go. Hey ho, let's go some. And then we're going to play with the pre delay. We're in hi fi right now. So we're not going to hear that much because it's what, 47 seconds, a millisecond or something. In standard, the reverb now is at 24k, which is which technically means that the high frequencies have some aliasing going on and stuff like this. Well, I'm changing the pretty late time. Of course, you have going on, and obviously with an expression pedal, yes, you can get those effects. Again, I have not changed the algorithm. Nice little slap back there. Let's look at the fusion. Maybe in hi-fi mode. more subtle but there are variations um, gonna mod it a bit Let's go into lo-fi mode.
So the longer the pre-delay in lo-fi mode, the lower the sampling rate and the crappier the sound. Room. This is all just a room. Moving up. Plate. Pretty phenomenal. Let's go lo-fi. And you can see I'm doing all of this without any menus.
let's move on. Because otherwise we'll never get done with this. Gonna go to hall. Even things out here. Hi-fi mode. Blooms up quite a bit more in the top end. Yeah, exactly. On that low uh, mode, as we've just heard, there's a little bit of delay that gets smeared out in medium. When is a reverb good? When you're playing it, and you're having fun. Any pedal, independent of its value or mojo or whatever, if you're enjoying it, is a brilliant tool. In this case, it's a little bit more expensive, but as soon as you're playing, you're like, oh my God, I don't want to stop. Then it's good. <laughs> I need, I need to stop. Holy crap. So I don't think this is as easily dial-inable 
as the thing where you go super mega dome crazy uh, wobbly modulation reverb um, shimmer. It doesn't as easily tell you what is going to happen. You have uh, room plate and hall, but then you have these sounds which are not at all. Um, you're going to have to learn what to do to get what you want or make your couple presets, bam, and uh, get those sounds. That leaves expression. So I'm going to plug in my expression pedal, which I have on the floor. And that's just something that I'm not happy with the... I'm going to read this to you. I took, took me an hour to figure this out. Maybe I'm dumb. There are three pages in this setup. Page E will assign which faders expression will control. So you push both of these in, and then it says E. Page T will set the position for each fader for the toe down, and here for the heel down. So toe down, heel down, you push both and you're back out. So E will define which faders will be affected. But it doesn't say one very tiny thing, which of course I, I figured out, but I, at first I didn't. What you have to do to assign them. That's what you have to do. You have to push the fader up. Now only that will be affected. So now I'm going to do this. This is my general uh, setup anyway for the preset. So I want it here on heel down. I want it there. Get out of there. And now that's what I'm doing. Wait, I gotta get up. Easy. If I want to now assign, let's say, the bass knob to it. Toe down. Let's say toe down's here. Heel down's here. See, now they're even going against each other. It's extremely simple to set up. They just omitted the fact that assigning happens by pushing the fader up that you want assigned. It doesn't say that. And I know it's a very, very, I mean, it's obvious, but it wasn't obvious to me. And I deal with pedals every day, so I don't know. And there is e even a global setting when you hold on a thing and then a little dot appears. That will mean that um, you can assign, let's say, the mix globally to the expression pedal for all presets. Right now, this is assigned for only the one preset. So um, if I'm getting out of here, I go to another preset. You can see I only did pre-delay there. Nothing there. Oh, I didn't save those. Ah, I have these two on that preset. So you can very clearly define the range and what not. So let's say I want my treble, as I go up in pre delay and mix, I want my treble to go down. So you assign treble, toe down is here, heel down is here, save that. It's ultra fast and very precise. But that one thing is omitted from the manuals. Let's see what I just set up there if that makes any sense. <laughs> Now, obviously, you're changing delay time with the pre-delay. And as you change delay time while you play, you're going to have pitch effects, obviously.
the sad thing is that this is a ridiculously long video already, and just with three algorithms. And the clock mode and the diffusion, or the tank mode, uh, I could dial in so many different sounds, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. That clock mode, for example, that's a kind of brainy, nerdy kind of a thing that technically happens in other algorithms and they just name it something differently. And here they're kind of laying it all out. Again, I don't think it's the easiest reverb to get into. Uh, maybe a little bit unpredictable because you will have to... I, I like to know what happens when I push a thing up and what the sound will be. I'm a sound designer. That's how I've been taught to predict what happens. Um, my teacher, Tom Ray, always said, the defi definition of a professional is someone who can predict the near future in their field. If I push this up, once I push this up, this is what I will hear. I will predict the near future. And uh, he's fully correct. And I like to know that. But maybe the magic of this is that you don't always know. And I know the type of people that will buy this don't necessarily want to know. They want the magic to happen. What I never mentioned is that this is built together with Meris. So Chase Bliss has digital control over analog circuits. And when it comes to the digital stuff, and this is, this is clearly a digital pedal, uh, they went for, to people that really know their shit. And that's Maris. I uh, did a video for Toman for the Maris Mercury 7 quite a few years back. And I never did it for the channel because I don't have one. But oh my god, it's a ridiculously intuitive and amazing ambient reverb. And I wish I had one. I wish I had a video for you guys. And I was immediately very impressed with what Maris can do. And so it made total sense for Chase Bliss to go to the masters of this type of reverb. And that's Maris. Build quality, ridiculous. Coolness factor, 11 out of 10. Uh, even, even cooler than double-headed llama, phoenix, winged horse on an 80s background. Way cooler than that. Um, presets, yay. Expression control, yes. A programmability with MIDI, yes. And how much does it make sense to put a thousand euro reverb on a pedal board? For, for little slapbacky kind of roomy things, well, if you want the creme de la creme and the really, really hot shit sounds, yeah, go for that. Realistically, something else will, will get you there too. When it comes to the hugeness and the big sounds, others have those, but others do not have those, if you know what I mean. If what you heard really gave you a reverb boner, then that's the pedal that'll get you there. Realistically, what I should do after this video, first of all, I'm going to write Chase Bliss an invoice because I'm getting paid to do the video. Uh, not paid for my opinion, that's not how it works. I should turn around and sell this because it's way too much money to just own it and have it sitting somewhere. But just like the uh, preamp mark II, I don't think I can make myself sell this because it's just too cool. I know it'll pay for dog food for quite a while. But I don't think I can I can do it because I want to have it. And this is the bottom line. Do you want to have it or do you not want to have it? Can you see yourself spending the money? Build quality, it's worth it. Sounds, can you get those from other reverbs? Exactly those? No, you can't. And as I said, reverbs have always been very expensive. And reverbs on a high level, lexicon, eventide, have been expensive. Well, there you go. That's that level that we're talking about. I hope this could tell you something. And if not, I'm sorry. Uh, if it did, great. Use my links below. I'm linking to... Uh, I, don't, I don't. You can't even get this at any place where I can make affiliate money. Damn it. I don't think Toman has it. I don't think Sweetwater has it. I'm going to link you to Chase Bliss and possibly Reverb or whatever. I don't make any money on that, but that's fine. That's, that's the game. Uh, you've been awesome. Thanks, Joel, and the whole Chase Blaze team. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, thanks, Leslie, for switching this. And animals at the end. It's times like these That show us what we're all about And will you please Be strong enough to sit this out 
I'll see you on the other side This kiss is a rainbow's forever one The time will come but not tonight It's why we have to stay six feet apart We're gonna come together We hold all the cards We only have to play them right So do your part And everything will be alright It might be hard